Here we go. So, um, let's see where to begin. I kind of feel like beginning in a different spot than usual today. Uh, can you tell me, typically, how many how many times during the course of a day do you feel like you have choices that you make? Uh, very little. Very. You don't have a lot of choices. Well, no, I have quite a few, I think, but. Well, what's an example of a simple choice that you make every day? For example, what kind of cereal to eat? Do you have any choice like that you can reference? Uh, yeah, kind of. I I spend a lot of time in my room. <laughs> okay. So, so it's, what, it's usually either video games, rarely read, or eat. <laughs> okay, so you're choosing between those activities? Usually, yeah. Do you have some requirement that occupies your time, like school or work, or are you just free to to entertain yourself as you see fit? Uh, I do have work. Okay, but it doesn't occupy a lot of time? Uh, not really, no. Okay, right on. Um, so, obviously you spend a certain amount of time on YouTube as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right. And what's your purpose for watching those YouTube videos? Is it you're trying to learn things, or you want entertainment, or you're trying to engage in self-growth, or what's your what's your overall motivation? For watching YouTube videos? Yeah. Uh, entertainment, otherwise, some, otherwise sometimes like learning or or uh, something to sort of get my mind going I guess as well okay so do you about, find yourself critiquing the videos you're watching trying to find things that are wrong with them do you find yourself trying to find things that are right about them or something else uh, it depends on the video. It usually I often watch like theory or science videos. Which so for the theory ones, I'll probably just listen to and not. And what's the purpose of, of knowing about that stuff or listening to that stuff? Is it just general interest, or do you think it's worth it's worth something more than that in increasing your knowledge, or what? I uh, usually the theory videos are like game theory, and and so it'll it'll usually be for. Sort of just looking at the idea and just sort of I mean just interest not or... really critiquing though but okay um, do you have a clear vision of what you'd like to do or where where you'd like to be in five or ten years? I wouldn't say I have a clear vision, but I do have an idea of where I'd uh, hope to be. Which is what? Uh, a math teacher. Okay. Olympic figure skater, you say? What? Olympic figure skater, you said? Oh, oh no, math teacher. Okay, my bad. Um, That's a very attainable goal. Yeah, it certainly is a very attainable goal. Uh, are you going to college? Yeah. 
You didn't mention that earlier. Are, are you taking math in college? Wait, what's the question again? Are you taking math in college? Wait, were you asking if I am in college? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> are you going to go to college? Yeah, yeah, that's why I said yes. I, okay, I, and, and when you go, you're planning to take math in college or what? Uh, yeah, I plan on you taking math. Okay. What what kind of math do you like best in high school? Uh, so far, well, I'm going to my senior year. Okay. And... Uh... What math are you taking in senior year? Uh, I'm taking AP Calculus and I might I, I might change my schedule a little bit, but right now I have uh, AP Computer Science Principles. AP Computer Science Principles and AP Calculus. Interesting. Okay, what about English class? Do you like English class? Um, Nobody likes English class. <laughs> kind of, sort of. What's it your, depends on what's being talked about, I guess. What's your least favorite class? My least favorite class is history. Well, why do you like history less? Why do I not like it? Yeah, is it the teacher or is it the subject matter? I would say it's the subject. Well, what don't you like about history? I guess it's just not really... It's, it's I think it's just like the topics are boring and stuff oh okay I just find it not very interesting thanks darling you're the best you're you really are this you got chicken and, feast. chicken and waffles Thank you. um Okay. Um, do you have PE? Yeah. Yeah. How do you like PE? I'd say I enjoy it, usually. What kind of things do you do in PE? Um, depending on the day, we'll have... Uh, like fitness days and other days will will have like a uh, like a sport we're doing and then after some number of weeks we'll take a test about that sport it's like one was the tennis and so we had to later take a test on like the structure of the tennis court and rules and stuff like that. I don't like the <laughs> I like the fitness days. I don't like the I don't really see the point in the tests. It's cross curricular, of course. That's what the point is. It's cross curricular. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um Okay, so do you get along well with the other students at school? I'm usually a very quiet person, but yeah, usually. Okay. Uh, do you do well in school? Like, do you get all A's? Um, in math, I do well, but others, I'll sometimes slack off and 
get bad grades. Do you like chemistry? What? Do you like chemistry? Uh, I thought it was okay. Do you like the natural sciences at all? What about biology? Which do you like better, chemistry or biology? I'd say biology. Why? Um. I'd say it's just a little more interesting. I just find it a little more interesting. I already know that. Why? What makes it more interesting? Thank you. Do you not know what makes it more interesting? Uh, yeah, you don't have to kill yourself. <laughs> if, you, if you just don't know, you just don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not so, sure. So do you know often what you like and dislike, but you don't know why? Uh... Usually, sometimes... A lot of times, yeah. Okay. okay. How... How... How clear are you about your own boundaries? Like, when somebody... If somebody does something you don't like... Is that immediately evident to you, or do you realize that later on? Uh... I'd say I usually spot it pretty quickly. Okay. How do you react in that situation? situation do you withdraw from the situation do you confront the other person what well if it's something like bad I guess and I'd be more cautious right but I I went like I don't think I would like reject them, but things are good. I'll probably uh... okay. <laughs> Have you changed a lot of the last few years since middle school? I'd say so. Yeah. Okay, in what ways have you changed? Um, well, one way is I'm less gullible. <laughs> You're less gullible, okay. <laughs> in the sense that, it's like, I used to uh, better, or I guess, more easily trust others word for things and so it, it would be less do you have a hard time picking up things like sarcasm or what I think so I Depends on what the person's. It depends on the context. I think. Okay. What do you know definitively about yourself? Who are you? What are the few things that you definitely know about yourself? Like, I am, yeah. Sounding like an
Not much. <laughs> <laughs> How much sleep do you need a night? How much sleep do I need? Yeah. Um. I guess quite a bit, maybe. Okay. Do you sleep eight hours a night at least? Uh. So Sometimes, and other times, I'll stay up late, and then I usually get up around the same time, regardless of the time I fall asleep. Okay. Is that because you have to go to school? Or just even during the summer? Even during the summer, but, like, there there will be different times, but it'll be, like, it'll usually be, like, a specific time, so a lot of the time. Okay. Like, if I fall asleep past midnight, uh, I'll wake up like nine or ten, usually maybe eight, and then. Okay. Then. Are Are you attentive to levels of thirst and hunger? Like, do you do you let yourself get too thirsty or too hungry, or you're pretty careful about not getting dehydrated or hangry? Um, I'm usually pretty bad when it comes to drinking, but food, I'm usually on top of that. <laughs> okay. Um, so can you talk to me about something specific that happened to you, say, a few days ago? Maybe you, something like, you went to 7-Eleven, and you got a, a double gulp of Coke, or something, something insignificant like that, a trip to a convenience store, or something like that. Can you relate a story about such an event to me? Have you purchased anything at a convenience store recently? No. Have you gone to a restaurant recently? Yeah. Okay. When was that when you went to the restaurant? Uh, I'd say about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, can you think of a time prior to today that you went to a restaurant recently? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Monday. Alright, Monday. Where did you go to, which restaurant did you go to? Dairy Queen. Okay, do you remember what you got? Okay. You don't remember what you ordered. Okay. Do you remember what the person who took your order looked like? Uh, no. Okay. Do you have any pets? Yeah. Um. What kind of pets do you have? Oh fuck. God damn it. I have two cats. You have two cats. I'm a fucking idiot, man. Can you tell me about your two cats a little bit? Like how they differ from each other? Um. One of them is. Usually. I guess you could say I don't know 
shy would be the right word, but just sort of just doesn't like to be touched or anything unless mm -hmm. sort of and the other one usually pretty friendly and okay can you tell what, can you tell what mood your cat is in by looking at them uh no i i don't think so no all right um i, I take guesses but i i wouldn't like know for sure or anything can you think of five different reasons why somebody might climb to the top of the tallest mountain in California? Uh, I can think of a few reasons, maybe. All right. Like, look, like get a either just for fun. Just to like do an activity there and and or or achieve something anything else and view <laughs> I guess. Okay, well, how about this? Five different reasons why you might want to join the army. Five? Yeah. Uh, one is... Where is the war to forge? One is what? One is to. What did I do with it? Protect. Uh, sure. To protect. <clears throat> train, I suppose. To protect and train, okay. Um, I come up, I, with, I, I come I don't up with a new invention. I come up with a new invention. It's a combination hairbrush with a brown thing comes along here with a lighter. So you can brush your hair while lighting cigarettes at the same time. I can't think of any good names for this product. Can you help me think of some good some good product names to help it to sell? Um one is Nah, that wouldn't fit. <laughs> I was thinking of hair lighter. <laughs> That's fine. Hair lighter's fine. That's your first one. Um. The cigarette brush. <laughs> okay. How about the smoking style? Or uh, mm -hmm. perhaps full body fire. The bun burner. <laughs> the bun burner. Sure. Um, flick your flare. That's a good one. Flaming hairbrush. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, I think so. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's do a couple of TI questions here. Can you tell me who my mother's husband's <clears throat> wife's only son is? Who's Sorry, my, say that again. Who's my mother's husband's wife's only son? Who is my mother's only son? You. Right. Who is my mother's husband? Your dad. Who is my mother's husband's wife? 
Your mom? Who is my mother's husband's wife's only son? You. Correct. Okay, so you're not polar, T.I. Um, mm. I think we typed you, but let me ask a couple more questions before we, we lay it out all out there. So, um, let me ask a couple more any questions. Uh, I'm going to start a story, and I want you to finish the story for me, okay? Once upon a time, there were two ducks and a penguin that lived in this one pond. Now, the penguin was always too hot because it wasn't very icy there. And he didn't like the kind of fish that you could catch in the pond. So he was always saying he wanted to move south for the winter. Uh, but the duck said, you idiot, you don't move, you, you do move south for the winter, but we're already south. You don't want to go any further south than this, it'll just get colder. Well, this confused the penguin for some time. Because he wasn't a very, he wasn't a very deep thinker, you might say. Um, so, go ahead, finish the story. What happened? <laughs> yes, they play Jeopardy later. <laughs> <laughs> they play Jeopardy. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> philosophical thinker, I'm pretty sure you're an ISFP. Now, I want to make sure, though, that you're not an ISTP. So let's do a few more TI questions and see how, how well you deal with them when you get warmed up on them a little bit. Alright, so if all potatoes grow underground and all cats are trees and all trees are potatoes what can we conclude about cats they're potatoes and trees true and that they grow underground okay yeah. how about this if if Tom, if either Tom or Joe goes to the football game, then Barry will be angry. But if both Joe, um, did I say Bob? Is that what I said? If, if either Joe or Bob goes to the football game, then Charles will be angry. But if neither Joe nor Bob goes to the football game, then Charles will be happy. And if both Joe and Bob go to the football game, then Charles will be absolutely livid. Now, it turns out at the end that Charles is not angry at all. What can we conclude? Uh... I think it was most likely an assumption either that or it was something Charles told and so it was a, potentially a lie. Okay. <laughs> All right. You are an ISFP. And I suspect you did not come here expecting to be told you were an ISFP. It's quite possible that you came in anticipating that you were an INTP or an ISTP or something like that. I don't know. What Did you have a thought coming in about what type you thought you were? Uh, yeah, I had a thought. Okay. Did you think ISFP? No. <laughs> no. But it goes to show you, look, you're really good at math, right? You're taking AP <laughs> calculus. Okay? That's, yeah. that's not easy to, to do. It shows you the power of a four slot TE when applied by an ISFP who's got an emotional link to what they want to do. So they're clearly motivated. It's like when you're doing your math, for you, you feel motivated to do well in it. You don't need to, you don't need the external motivation, I would suspect. And so your TE kicks in just fine in those limited capacities. Probably in other capacities, you'd like to be shown how to do stuff, 
but in those areas where you feel strongly like you know what you want and how to what you know you know what you want then you're probably quite good at determining how to get there and how to do those things um, let me ask you what your thoughts are from having heard this diagnosis and uh, what questions you might have or where you'd like to take the conversation to make sure that you feel satisfied that we've uh, gone over it enough, made sure that we got the right type or anything else, you, any other thoughts or concerns you have. Uh, I'd say it's accurate. I don't really have any complaints. Okay, cool. Well, we have plenty of time left. Now, here's the thing about ISFPs and ISTPs both, that Tracy and I were talking about yesterday, is they talk less than anybody else. <laughs> you know, they, they really do talk less. So when I, we ask you questions, right, you give us, you're very slow to give us an answer, and when you do give us an answer, it's a very short answer. It's not... You're right. not expansive. You're not going, and then blah, 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 blah about myself, and blah, 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 blah about myself, right? You just, that's just not your style. You don't, you're not accustomed to, to talking about yourself a lot because you spend all of your time in your own authentic self, which is your feelings. Like, you know what's important to you and what you don't like and what matters. And presumably, I guess, you are, you're good at putting yourself in other people's shoes. So you think, well, I, am I going to say this? Well, how would I feel if somebody said that to me is probably something you think, I would guess. Yeah, I'd say, so. yeah, usually. Okay. So, um... That's, know, I think that's one of the reasons... That's one of the reasons why I usually try and give short answers because I don't want to spend too much time. Well, I gotta tell you this. You are... Because otherwise I'll... You are what? so much different than I expected from your comments and your emails and stuff. Emails and stuff. I expected somebody who was um, a lot more gregarious, right? Because you, you, but you obviously you have time to think about your comments. And so you sit there and you think about it and then you write out what you want to say. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's a little different than um, interacting with you in person. Uh, right. Because you're showing an intuitive quality, for sure, but it's stemming from your third slot in I, and I think that's one of the things, that's one of the takeaways I'm, I'm realizing about ISFPs and ISTPs both, is they do have a certain intuitive quality to them, especially when you're dealing with them via text, well, because they're, they're third slot. Yeah, they're basically the most intuitive sensors, at yeah. least at a cursory glance. With, with, with <clears throat> NI in the third slot, and I is a very is the real kind of intuition, you know. Extroverted intuition is really ought to be called something else. Yeah, kind of. You know, right? But actual intuition is introverted intuition, where it all comes together and you go, "Ah, that's right. intuition." So, since that's your third slot and where you get your payoff, that's your scorecard. You're gonna you're gonna resonate a lot of ni in your shit, and um, so it's easy enough for. Like if you were to take an online test, you might very well mistype as an intuitive. Yeah, I the I think the very first the very first uh, result I ever got on an MBTI test was ISFP, and <laughs> and then. And that was on the, uh, that was on the, uh, uh, 16personalities.com. They got one right. It's got one, well, no. It must be right, because it's almost impossible to test as an ISFP on that. Yeah, you're always going to get ISFP. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I took it again later and got INFP. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And then, once, and then once, I think there was <clears throat> like I kept on taking it a bunch of times just to like make sure I was doing the right, like uh, uh, make sure I was answering it correctly or something. Seeking TE. Yeah. <laughs> right. You don't want to be criticized for not doing something the right way. Well, philosophical thinker, let me tell you something. Unfortunately, because you're under 18, I cannot offer to transubstantiate a bond rip for you. 
I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you're going to have to do without a transubstantiated bone rib until you turn 18. All right. That's the rules. That's the metaphysical law. Right. It's okay, though. But you'll, you'll be able to yeah, manage. You'll have you your wait. time. You can hang in another... Listen, on your 18th birthday, I want you to come to the live stream. So <laughs> hopefully I'll live stream that day. You tell me it's my 18th birthday. And on that day, I will transubstantiate one of these long ribs for you, okay? So, I'm curious, though. Do you do anything creative at all? Like, do you make or produce anything? Um... Not really. I do have a YouTube channel, though. Oh, well, you I mean, do? that's something. That, what do you talk about yeah. on your YouTube channel? Philosophy stuff? Um... I'm up for, like, pretty much anything on that channel. Uh, the whole point is basically just ask a question and I'll do my best to answer it. Oh, I see. Of. Okay. So you like being prompted in the ideation by questions. Um, like yeah, but right now I've, I've just been just exploring my own thoughts or pretty and much getting detailed instructions. Right. So... <laughs> My most recent video is like a uh, math puzzle. Oh, a math puzzle. Now, were you able to solve the hats question? I don't know. Did you ever hear the hats question that I, I put up before or the TI test or whatever? I think so. Wasn't it with the... the Five hats in the bag, three prisoners. Yeah. Was it... There was a blind guy in that one, right? Yeah. Third one's yeah. blind, but can still tell whether what color hat he has by the previous one's answers. Yeah, I got I I was able to solve that, but it, I <clears throat> in one of the videos you were doing, I left a comment saying that I don't think it would like say much about either any or Ti, just because I've seen a problem similar to that and so I based my conclusion off of that okay well that would be just basic demonstrative SI learning you know um, <coughs> SI definitely does matter and so there's a lot of things that you can't draw firm conclusions about if people have encountered it before that's true I try I try to try to always make up at least some sort of variation on my TI questions to ask people in typing sessions because I assume that they probably watched maybe a video or two, you know? And so I want to give them something they've not heard before. But um, that one I actually got from a source uh, other than my own head. That that one I got from Delilah's logic class. She was taking college logic, and um, her teacher gave her that problem. And so that's where I got that one from. But in general, I try to just test out the different kinds of conditionality like uh, sil syllogistic <coughs> reasoning, which is like all, uh, hmm. all things having attributes or whatever. Uh, conditional reasoning, which is like if then it or something. fucking fly. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. So uh, I try to test it out in different ways. Yours is pretty decent. It's like you've got eight slot TI, which is you can when. It, it's not, it doesn't naturally come to you to parse things that way because your natural state of being is to parse things in terms of human experience, not in terms of the, the binary strict definitions of words that are parsability, which, which seems like to you probably reductive. It's like words, words are there to express things that are genuine, and they're always just symbols of the things that are genuine. For a type that's TI in front of FI, it would be the other way around. The symbols are more important fundamentally, and the experiences, the actualities are somehow secondary. Uh, mm -hmm. For my type, probably more than any other, it's maximally that way, where it's like, it's all about, if we all agree on the right words, then it doesn't matter if the world's burning down around us, as long as we all agree that it's not, and we're happy, then we're good. You know? Which is right. kind of crazy, but <laughs> kind of yeah. It's a little, it's a little nutty. That's an extreme example. Out. I mean, yeah. yeah, but yeah. Um, Spacey, you got any thoughts or comments here? Yeah, you know, for some reason, I feel the need to like. If you are 
an ISTP or an ISFP, it, it seems to me that you guys always seem to get some sense of satisfaction out of making things with your hands, like whether it's woodworking or metalworking or some kind of skilled trade or some shit. I don't know if you've ever considered trying to do anything like that, but you might be good at it. I don't know. I mean, in a way, math is the metaphysical equivalent right. of making it kind of is. Your hands. So I, I, I guess what what draws you to math, like what, because it seems like a strange thing. I guess for me, for I guess I've seen INF INFPs that kind of like math, but I rarely see ISFPs that like it. So. Um. I don't know, I just... There's just a lot you can do with it, I guess, and... So you like how universally applicable it is? Like how it seems to explain everything? Um, not real, not necessarily. I do like looking at the... Well, how does it make you feel? When you're immersed in math? When you're in your, you know, flow state or whatever. Do you feel satisfaction when it all resolves and you have the answer? Um... <clears throat> uh. Sometimes. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't really... Well, the, the way I usually process information is very... is... well, at least assuming... Uh, I usually numb down the feelings, and so it's just visual information. Okay. And so I'm processing things in my head, and so I I like. It's almost like I have no emotion, basically. Okay. Interesting. So you exclude the dominant function, and you se it. Basically, you turn it into visual things, and then I guess you eight slot ti it with four slot te to to sort of learn the processes. That's. That's really interesting. It shows you how versatile every every one of the types is. How they all have workarounds for their for their blind spots, for their shortcomings, or whatever. Um, and how those workarounds can be very effective. You know, it's like I can have very good TE sometimes, even though it's actually quite shitty. It just it's inefficient, which is sort of counter to its own value, but it can get the job done no problem. Well, the funny thing is, sometimes visually doing math can be very efficient. Like I even find myself. Like, I remember having a conversation about economics with somebody, and I was like, so you mean it's kind of like um, a scatter plot with a line of best fit, right? In order to kind of wrap your mind around exactly what sort of data set it is and how it's being utilized. And so you get that picture of a scatter plot with that line through the middle, and that gives you a perfect understanding of what's going on. So That's some, interesting. I don't really operate yeah. like that. I don't do visual <clears throat> stuff very well at all. So it can it can be a useful shortcut if you're good with it, which if you're SE tool, you're probably pretty good with it. Right. Because I mean, the extrovert sensing the tool function means that you're going to be, as opposed to any tool function, which is you're fundamentally rooted in words, SE tool function, you're fundamentally rooted in visualities, probably. You know, that's why ISFPs tend to be good painters or like spatial sensing tend to make things with their hands because they're rooted spatially because they're SE. Whereas um, any users are rooted conditionally, so it's, there's no there is no concrete spatial relationship between things in any user's mind. They're just ideational relationships. Well, actually, that reminds me. There's a point basically right around where you are, AP calculus and AP physics, where calculus and physics sort of become the same thing. Fit High-level physics is basically calculus spatially, so it has uh, vectors added to it. If you know what a vector is. Yeah. So if 
if you want to go into high level physics or something, you may find that very appealing to a spatial way of thinking. Right. You may find that your NI <coughs> provides you intuitive visual holes that solve problems or that give you new insight into things that don't that doesn't require you to be ideationally active with your extroverted intuition. See, the extroverted intuition way to get to solutions, a way to, to get to new ideas, is to just throw a bunch of random shit out there and then sort of pick through it and go, okay, this is a good idea, or whatever. But your way of doing it is never going to do that. You're never going to throw random shit at a problem. You're always going to wait for the, the pieces that you are sort of gathering conditionally in your head to collapse down into a singular, okay, this is now I understand it. And that should give you a, a good deal of satisfaction because that's your third slot function is to have that NI. Those NI moments are going to pay off for you. Any, any other thoughts or, or interest areas of interest you'd like us to explore? Uh. I can tell you my experience with INFPs, ISFPs around this point, around 50 minutes, 45 minutes, they need to go retreat and decide how they feel about the experience. And they really, they, they're about done, typically. Now, if you don't want to be done, that's fine. We've got more time, we can use it. But that's my experience with FI DOMs is the sessions tend to run short because my, my belief about it, I could be wrong, you correct me if I'm wrong, um, is that they at that point they feel like they're full of stuff that they need to process with their FI. Mm. One thing I do want to mention is that when I'm sort of trying to talk things out or uh, usually it'll be as an image in my head but as I try to talk about that idea, it tends to fade away. Hmm. Interesting. My, see, my friend's kind of like that, and I think he's in, he's maybe an ISTP, and he has that thing right where he has to, as soon as he stops holding the image in his head, it vanishes. Well, it shows you why right. any tool and SE tool are colder to the other one, because right. any really is talking, and when you're talking about shit, if you're trying to hold a whole idea in your head, it doesn't work because talking is, especially the way that any users talk, which is they, they think as they talk more than, they, than before they talk, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense then that um, your polar function, when you're when you're compelled to use it, and it's an odd thing to think about it to have the polar function talking. Because really that's, that's what your blind spot is, is talking because it interferes with your tool function. It's like my own feelings is a blind spot for me because it interferes with my logical parsing of things. If I have a, a if I have a care about what you are, or or anything other than whether or not you perceive me as competent and whether or not I'm right, then it's interfering with my tool function. You know, and so it's it's in, very interesting to hear you say that, and it shows you that you don't have to say a lot to make an ideational impact, right? That's a, a great observation. Yeah, before you told your solution, I was, I was coming, I was already sort of like, he's, he's going to guess me I, I ISFP, isn't he? <laughs> so really, you did know already. That's some good dirt slotting yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my my initial guess was INTJ, but yeah. <clears throat> well, this is the thing. That's why type descriptions and, and correlates are very uh, misleading. If you say, well, this is a kid who's in, um, who's in AP Calculus and who's uh, interested in typology and other idea stuff. Well, you're immediately going to leap to INTJ, but it shows you that we shouldn't assume that just because somebody's an ISFP, they can't kick ass in AP Calculus. It, you know, you're still you're still very capable. It just you're, as you've explained here, you think a different way. 
it doesn't it's not a way I can like intuitively get because I've never experienced it like thinking in terms of images and stuff like that but I can see clearly how it can be a totally equally effective way of getting to the same place you know so that's the thing if you if we focus on correlates like what you're good at what you're interested in or whether you're into typology or whatever we will be led astray consistently because that's not a good way to type somebody right I also think FI in the first slot can be like a really really good motivator right it, it gives you it, it basically allows you to do it really does is what allows you to do whatever you set your mind to basically and effort, it correlates more strongly with success than talent. Right. Across the board. In one all, thing I have noted. <laughs> Go ahead. One sorry. thing that both myself and like many teachers, especially English teachers, I think, it like once I have something, like when there's something to write about, and I have that idea, and I have. Once I get into that flow or get my mind to it, it'll then be able to just go on and on. Once you have a clear vision of what it's supposed to be. What? Once you have a clear vision of what it's supposed to be. Uh, usually it's more like, well, yeah, what it's supposed to be, but also like, just like generally what it's supposed to be. And just like a starting introduction, sort of, once I get that idea, I can sort of quickly... You have to just know what you're doing. What? You just have to feel like you know what you're doing, right? Like, oh, okay, I get it now. And then, after that point, you don't really have to think anymore, I'm sure. <laughs> uh. <laughs> We're talking about, ultimately how it makes you feel. Right. So, there are no words. There are no words that can describe the nuanced depth of your moisture. Okay? No matter what words we use, it will always elicit the following response from you. Eh. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's FI right there. Like, you know exactly what it is, but you have no idea how to articulate it. There aren't enough words to describe it because mm -hmm. it's a it's a really realized feeling, which is to say, it doesn't it's not subject to the binary nature of words and parsing that's implicit to any T I. It's instead implicit to the experiential and non binary nature of of F I and T E. <laughs> Torching the bong rip, torching the bong rip, torching is very good. A little too big. A little bit too big. Or I didn't start poking it soon enough. He wasn't quite able to pull it through. I have to finish it. There's a good rip though. That's Daddy Eric for you. He's a swell guy. Other thoughts? Comments, questions, concerns, complaints, queries. Um. No, not really. No. Cool. Okay. Cool. Are you okay with me publishing this video? Uh, yeah, I'm fine with it. All right. Great. Thank you very much. So, um, if you have any follow-up questions or anything, please feel free to email. I will do try to respond to follow-up questions. For, I'll, I'll respond to you. Yeah. Will. yeah, so <laughs> if you do have any thoughts, if you've sat around and felt about this for a while, please let us know. We're happy to answer. Mm -hmm. Okay? Or come into the raw rooms or whatever if you want. Yeah, go to the raw room, talk yeah. to people there, too. If you tell them you just got to type, you know, ISFP, they'll probably be interested in trying to prove us wrong, I guess. As is their way. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.